Hey, what's up? What's going on? It's your girl, Mary Jane. Please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, my peeps, my peoples. So let's talk. There's another person that's coming out saying that they used to work with Usher back when Usher owned a bar. Um, and he was on Twitter just giving out this information, spilling the tea, basically. But the, the report says, it says, Usher, former employee, spills gay tea. So we're just going to um, look at his, you know, uh, Twitter his name is um, Korean Canada. Um, it says, I worked for Usher back in the day, and I can say I am not surprised. It goes, um, new STD lawsuit against Usher, two more women and a man. And so, you know, this former employee was on Twitter, you know, and it's most likely not coming from a good place. Could be, you know, just to get Twitter followers, get posted on different websites. But anyways, Korean Canada. It says, okay, a couple of folks are asking me about my days at Usher's Wine Bar. So Usher owned the wine bar back in the day. The Grape. I was 24 and I had just moved to Atlanta 1.5 years before. So he says, I was a part of the grand opening team in 2006. We were all excited and there was a lot of media and fanfare about this bar opening so then the next tweet time the man he was the manager Corinne was the manager time the manager named Walter no Walter was the manager says time the manager named Walter was handpicked by Usher and he was that stereotype DL dude he was extra flirty with the females and the staff and then he keeps on at time he would get Handsy with some of us gay males serving and making um, nasty comments. When Usher would come in, he would get hella, I guess, freaky or whatever. I'm um, excited and not in, not in the I am the manager type, kiss the owner's ass kind of way, but the type that my dude kind of way is the private room, going into the private room, I guess. So I guess he's, he's saying that this manager, when Usher would come around, he would get more handsy, Philly, and he would be in the private room with Usher. It says slide, and he would slide into the booth and just chill with Usher for as long as he pleased. It was bizarre scene. I never known a manager to just kick it. Well, you don't watch Black Ink. <laughs> so anyways, and chill with the owners like they were dating. Anyways, other times Usher would bring his home, his bodyguard with him and they sit in there too. Um, candles lit room together. So I guess the VIP room had candles lit room together and eat food and drink wine like they were on a romantic date starting staring into each other's eyes. Okay. You see, when you wasn't working either, if, you, if you're noticing they got candles and they were staring into his, each other's eyes, what the hell were you doing? And then the private booth, what, what, where were you working? It was, uh, confusing, but uh, confusing because of his public persona. So he was saying it was a confu confusing image because of, you know, Puffy's, I mean Puffy, yeah, that boule child molester, um, allegedly. Um his Usher public persona as being a ladies' man, that's what he says. His public persona of being a ladies' man. Now at at the same time, while this was going, these conversations, dating were occurring. So he was like, now at this same time, while these conversations, dating were occurring. So I guess he's saying Usher was dating these, the manager or whatever. He goes, he was engaged to Tamika Foster at the time. They are, they are dynamic. Their dynamic were odd, and the way they interact, it just seems very uncomfortable and friendly. So maybe, you know, she was just his bear, his cover, and she knew it. Who knows? But anyways, to get back to Usher, it just seems like, you know, um, Usher was, you know, passed around, in my opinion. I believe Usher was a part of the Gay Boule, which is a, a secret society, which is the elite black males in America. And basically their purpose is to make sure they control any and everything and they're funded by the rap they're fun they're funded by, you know, different type of organizations. Organizations they go against and organizations they go for. So this is, you know, a lecturer um Bobby Hammett just talking about, you know, the gay boule. So I'll give you a little snap of it. 
So I'm going to have play. They continue to do these things. That is because they go under the same level who, of the people who started them, which is the skull and bones, which is the same ritual, whereas you have to have sexual intercourse with the other man, and that is your secret. That is the thing. So it's my little secret. It's, this is your secret where, you know, you have sex with another man, and that's your secret, and you keep it in, and that's how you are promised these great careers, and so you have secrets that you have on people, and sometimes these secrets get exposed like we see now with Usher, and, and sometimes you even got to think about if, you know, these women, if it's all true, or is this just blatantly to try to destroy his image, you know what I mean, because they do send people to say that they have been infected and do infect themselves. It, it, it happens plenty of times, but I'm not saying this happened in this case. This is just a different aspect because I did a lot of different videos on Usher. So this is just another aspect of thinking. Like, you know, I'm not saying Usher was right and all this other stuff, but it's just like if you watch each video, you'll see where I give a different perspective looking at the situation and not just looking at it at one side because I like to look, I like to do the 360 all the way around, so we're going to finish. Thing of yours. The La Costa Nostra, when they say this thing of ours, is the word for La Costa Nostra. This thing of ours. Well, what is this thing of ours? You are sworn to secrecy because of a homosexual act. So, this is why it's so ingrained and rooted on such a higher level, because I fuck you in the ass, and therefore I always have this on you. And so, therefore, I was secret. You see, you can always stand. Now, remember now, this is not a out with a gay homosexual reign, whereas you, you know, homosexual reign, whereas you gay and somebody screws you and everybody, but if you're out of the closet, there's no secrecy in that. These are for upstanding. You see, these are, there's no secret if you're, if you're already having sex with guys, it's all good. You know, there's nothing that you have. Um, holding you to or bonded to another person. But these people that have the secret where they have the image that you see Usher being straight, you have the image of Bobby Valentino being straight. We had the image at one point as uh, Puff Daddy being straight. But if you even want to talk about it, what about Biggie Small lyrics? You look so good. Uh, I suck on your daddy's dick. That's crazy. So anyway, let's finish. Members of society, so unquote, unquote, that stand to lose everything because of the families, because of the whole social order, if somebody found out that they're gay. You see, usually these people are supposed to be the ultimate form of the virile male executing this fake falsehood power in these movements. So, that was like a little snippet of some parts of uh, what is happening to Usher and what happens when you enter that society of the of the black gay boule where these are outstanding members of society that we would never think would do this would never be with anybody else because they portray an image to us and also they're in control of finance and money that's what funds them so therefore when you go against the grain you see shit happen and i'm not saying usher went against the grain or usher did anything wrong what i'm just saying is this is what is part of that secret society where these, some of these males are forced to do this, and some of these males, you know, agree to do this because there is something that they might receive. And, you know, this is just another, you know, conspiracy as well. There's different aspects. So, like I said, check out the video. But if you just, you know, if you just even look at, back at Usher's album, him working with Ellie Reed and Puffy, Devontae, and some other people, the lyrics was for his age, 14, 15, 16, um, the, the music, you know, I loved it. The, the, don't don't let me fool you. The music was on point, but it was very sexual. I mean, every I went through some of the songs, just the lyrics. I mean, so sexual that it is unbelievable. Like, yo, wow. Like, <laughs> so anyways, you know, more information will pop up because more people are going to come up with information. So anyways, peace. I'm out. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for sharing the video. Please like, comment, subscribe. It'll be greatly appreciated. I'm out. Deuces, my